Hey yo, this is Dash, and in this video, I'm going to basically show you a time lapse that I took while I was on an on site event. So, first and foremost, shout out to Bumpy. Bumpy actually got me this job. He was going to be out of town, so he recommended me to do this job, and I did the on site cook for him and his, the Alumni Association at his or from his high school. But I'm going to do a voiceover of the time lapse. Get ready. All right, so I am getting set up here. If you don't know, that grill there is Johnny Five, my five foot grill table that I purchased from Meadow Creek Barbecue Supply. I do believe I have a link down in the description for Meadow Creek or at least it's a website, really look it up, Meadow Creek Barbecue Supply. They're in central Pennsylvania. Yes, I use lighter fluid. That is the best way to get this grill started. I did, however, forget my torch. I got about halfway to this event and I realized I forgot my torch. So when I got set up, the organizer brought me two coolers full of food. And you see I'm using my leaf blower to kind of get the embers blown around and sped up. Like I said, I forgot my blowtorch. So I was in the process of getting the food kind of organized. I did not provide the food for this event. This event, the food was provided for me. Really was trying to help somebody else out. If you saw there, uh, that was taste test number two. And one of his friends, he went with me or they went with me to help out. And yeah, so at this point, I'm trying to organize the food in the cooler so I can see what I'm working with. And I had plenty of hamburgers and hot dogs. And as you see, I just got more. Those were hot dogs. This is one of the organizers there I was talking to. She was asking about the leaf blower. And look, but wait, there's more hamburgers. So at this point, I'm like, okay, well, the grill's getting started. I'm going to start some turkey burgers and while the grill isn't too hot. So I get the turkey burgers set up. I actually sent Taste to number two. He went and got a trash bag for me. The stuff that I was taking out of the trash bags, he was able to put in the trash for me. That guy there was asking about turkey burgers. He smelled the grill and was like, yo, was what, what, you know, when? So he told me where he was. But he was basically like, well, when you, when you, when you finish, let me know and I'll come over. Sure. So if you can see the smoke in the, in the camera was set up on the canopy, the canopy was being blown around. So I do apologize for the fact that the camera is moving around the way that it is. There really is not much I could do about it. The wind was being the wind. It wasn't like a, a gusty wind. It was like a steady wind. And the bad thing was the wind was blowing the smoke directly into my eyes. So soon after I get these burgers loaded, I change the orientation of the grill. So I'm gonna turn it around the opposite way. So you never know which way the wind is gonna blow, literally. And this was one of those instances, one of those days. So here I am closing it down, getting ready to move it around. And let me turn you guys around too. So up at the top, we're on the far left was the beef burgers and then closest to you guys or closest to, to the camera are the turkey burgers and those turkey burgers they're the first batch of turkey burgers i don't know what it was or, or why but they stuck to the grill so i didn't let them sit on the grill long enough but you see how i keep moving back away from the grill the smoke was just it was it was intense it was also really hot that day it was like 95 degrees this particular day and I was hating life after this was all over with. So as you can see, I'm wearing long pants. Usually I have boots on, but I didn't have my boots. So I have the cotton gloves underneath. And then I have on a like a wicking shirt, a UV shirt underneath my steel drum smokers shirt. And that's to keep the sweat basically off of my arms because I know how I am. I'm, I'm like on, I'll sweat through everything especially standing at the grill in 95 degree heat.
So as you can see, we were getting a little bit of a flame up. And here you can also see that I ended up switching, not switching, but using a separate spatula for the turkey burgers. I mean, I always talk about cross-contamination and other things like that. So I wanted to make sure I kept the, the turkey separate from the beef as far as cooking. And you see how that pan was moving around? Man, the wind was no joke. And how the canopy, the camera is moving around again because of the fact that the wind was blowing. So I set this up and we are looking, we're probably about a half an hour, 45 minutes into this cook so far. And, you know, I'm just kind of chugging along and, and steady cooking. So the turkey burgers, for whatever reason, the turkey burgers were way more frozen than the beef burgers. And I feel like they're denser, if that is a term necessarily, or that is a, a good descriptor, because they took longer to cook. So as you saw, the beef burgers were in and out and done. The turkey burgers were just a little thicker, and I swear they were a little more frozen, and they took longer to cook. So this is the first batch of turkey burgers done. And start pulling out some hot dogs. So these are beef hot dogs. Trying to get things organized. I actually had a little cold drink. Taste us number two brought over like a frozen something or other. But I was dying. It was so hot. And here's some more hot dogs. These are actually chicken hot dogs. Ugh. I mean to each their own. I don't know what it is or, you know, what, but there were a lot of people who wanted chicken hot dogs. They brought me, I swear I had five or six packs of chicken hot dogs. Honestly, it really must be a Maryland thing because I don't, mm -mm. I'm not a fan of chicken hot dogs. Like they, they taste fake to, fake to me, but it is what it is. Look, I'm getting getting cooked, paid to cook. I'm cooking what I'm what I'm giving. Those are beef hot dogs off to the left and the chicken hot dogs off to the right. I tried to again keep things separate. When I was cooking the hot dogs, I really I won't say I didn't didn't matter, but I didn't worry so much about the cross quote unquote contamination. Um so yep, yeah, cooked hot dogs. And what happened was I was cooking and where I was set up, I was further away from the area where everything else was. And the reason being is I couldn't, they didn't want me to have the, the grill set up on the grass. So I did actually take a, a, a short video a little later and I'll, I'll put it into this video a little later, kind of explaining and showing you where I was in regards to where everything else was going on. So again, beef hot dogs, in and out, chicken hot dogs. We're just going to let them do what they're going to do. And this is how I continue for the next about three hours at this point. I'd cook a couple batches of hot dogs, a couple batches of hamburgers, and I'd see how much food was left. The tent, or there was a canopy set up where the food was laid out, and there was a lot of food laid out. So I would cook take food over to that canopy, put things in, take things out, <laughs> and pretty much went from there. I don't remember what Taste Us number two was doing at that moment. Actually, I do know. I sent them to get a uh, the pan, the, the full size, or the, the half pan that I had for the chicken hot dogs wasn't big enough. And I asked them to get me a full size catering pan. All right. So here I'm putting more burgers on the grill. And we're just going to load it up. Had a bit of an issue with getting these burgers out. They were. You know, they're sitting on ice, so they're not as cold as they need to be. But I got them, got it in there, got it done. There's always people who want to say that they would cook with the grill wide open. And you saw right there what ended up happening was it was flaming up. And here we, we can see again, 
the grills flaming up and it will overcook things or burn things because they're cooking too fast, too high. So I move the grill out just a little bit from under the canopy to help with the smoke. And same thing, the flames definitely are a bit higher because of the fact that the grill was open. But, you know, constant, professional, got it done. Now, when I'm doing burgers like this for on-site cooks, I, I, I won't say undercook them, but I don't cook them too, like, well done. They're going to be sitting in a pan, and the worst thing you can do is cook them to the point where they are well done and be dried out by the time someone picks them up and eats them. All right, so at some point, my camera either overheats or it dies. I believe it overheats and it shuts off. So there is a portion, a point where there's uh, plenty of footage that was missed. But you see, I'm just kind of taking a break at this moment after cooking for about 45 minutes to an hour, taking a break. And I had a beverage, you know, something to, to help cool me off. And then, you know, right back at it. More burgers, more hot dogs. So I realized the camera was off, like I said, and, and once I realized the camera was off, I set it back up, and that was not too long after. I thought it was a longer pause, but I'm glad it wasn't. So turkey burgers, again, on the right. Beef burgers on the left. And those burgers worked out much better. Again, I th think it was just needing some grease or something on the on the grill in order to make them not stick. This is when Bumpy got there. So, you know, Bumpy, like I said, is the one who hooked me up with this particular job. Up oh, there was our picture we took. So he, he hooked me up with the job. He was out of town. He got back into town late the night before, so late Friday night. This was Saturday afternoon. And he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to do this event. So he, you know, passed the buck and said, hey, uh, I got a guy, <laughs> literally. And uh, he looked out. So a couple dollars in my pocket. I'm not mad at that. And I got to meet Bumpy. This is the first time I actually got to meet him in person. We live across town from each other, but, dude, Aside from seeing them in the comments and on the live streams, I have never met Bumpy. And I'm like, how have I not bumped into you? So we got to talking and, you know, I mean, we were BSing. So I'm still cooking while, you know, while I'm talking. And I'm like, all right, you know, got to get my job done. Bumpy had his son there and his son ended up, well, wanted to go to the playground. So he was, he was uh, bugging Bumpy to take him to the playground. But, so, you know, same thing, same cycle, hot dogs, hamburgers, turkey burgers, and just getting it done. So, surely, like I said, well, this event was, I was there from 2 p.m. until 6 p.m., so four hours straight cooking, you know, I, the, the setup time. Normally, because this event was, they pay me for such a long period of time, I normally would bill for a half an hour setup and a half an hour to break down, but I didn't. I just got there at two o'clock, started setting up, started cooking immediately once I got there. And I started cooking probably about 2.15, 2.30. Bumpy gave me a beer. He brought beers. So I'm like, well, hell, I'm going to partake in the beer. Let me sit off to the side. And so good looking. Thank you again, Bumpy. 
Appreciate that. You see me standing away from the grill every now and again? That's just to get some air. You see again how much the camera is shaking around. It was a windy, windy day. More chicken hot dogs. I don't I don't get it. Someone please explain the, the chicken hot dog phenomenon to me in the comments, because I don't get it. It's for me it's beef hot dogs or nothing. So it's cool hanging out with Bumpy. At this point, we were, like I said, we were talking BS and shooting the breeze, talking about different things, talking about different barbecue related uh, things. And uh, I had a good time chopping it up. Definitely. But, you know, I, I kept I kept it moving while I was cooking, you know, talking and working. So at this point, we were I was dropped off some chicken. So this chicken I start putting it on the grill and I'm like, yo, smell this. this. Something's wrong. Yo, this chicken is bad. So I get the, where I ask him to get the organizer. I'm like, smell my glove. Smell my finger. And then I get the guy who brought the food over and I'm like, yo, nope, I'm not cooking this. So I scraped it off the grill. There we go. Bumpy helped me get this off the grill. He was helping me put it on the grill. He's like, oh man, I'll help you out. I'm like, dude, man, I got this. I'm so then, you know, I'm like, bruh. So we had a good conversation, a good talk about this. And he's like, this is why I don't cook anything with a bone in it on site. And I'm like, I'm going to adopt that. Yo, poured that into that bag there. It was nasty. Come to find out that guy there. Come to find out he left that chicken sitting in his car from eight o'clock in the morning. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon at this point. So now I'm sitting here, we're talking. I'm just like, all right, let me let me kind of get the grill cleaned off a little bit, let the heat do what it's going to do, and then watch what I do. So again, I give it some time, and I'm sitting here, and I'm like, what am I going to do to clean this grill? I'm like, I can't really scrape it or anything like that. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to let that area, you know, kind of self-clean from the heat. And when I do this this thing here, just just wait for it. Y'all see what I'm doing there? Ice. I'm cleaning the grill. <laughs> I had no other, I didn't have a water source with me. So I'm like, all right. And then I asked Bumpy to help me move the grate. Now I've done it by myself and it just takes a couple trips on either end of the grill. But if there's someone there, it makes it much easier. So at this point, I'm moving the coals around to try to, you know, get the, the most heat out of the coals. Scraping off the bottom of the grates just a little bit, a little bit of gunk that's dripping down. All right, and we're gonna get the next bit of cooking back up on. So we got a couple more hot dogs now. These were meat hot dogs. There were no labels on this one, so these were like beef, pork, chicken, or pork beef chicken. I don't know what the heck they were, but. I'm like, mm, yeah, this is uh, this is about it. Now, I did have food left over that I did not get to cook. There were one or two boxes of beef uh, hamburgers. There were like another pack or two of the chicken hot dogs and like one or two packs of turkey burgers. When I was cooking, the, the, the organizer basically said, you know, just, just cook fast enough to make sure food is fresher as opposed to just straight cooking everything and having stuff just sitting out, sitting out, sitting out. So that's what I did. I wasn't like in a rush. Like I, you know, see him drink some water, trying to cool off again. It was like 95 degrees that this particular Saturday. So this was uh, two or three weeks ago. Oh, I dropped one. You see, I dropped the hot dog on the ground. The worst thing you can do when you drop food on the ground is pick it up right away. I always, and I was telling Bumpy, because he's like, oh, you dropped one. I'm like, man, that's the devil's cut. So the last thing you do is you pick that up off the ground. Because if you pick it up ahead of time, you're going to drop another one. Ask me how I know in the comments.
All right, so more hot dogs, more hot dogs, more hot dogs. At this point, I was just trying to clear out the rest of the food. Like I said, I did not actually finish cooking everything, but that was okay. I talked to the organizer, and like I said, she was cool with it because she wanted me to have food fresher as opposed to just cooking everything. So at this point, I'm like, all right, the grill's starting to slow down. I'm starting to slow down. You see, I'm, I had a beer in hand. Oh, it was it was great at that point. I lowered the grill there because, again, the grill was starting to slow down. The charcoal was dying off. At this point, I had been cooking for probably close to three hours, maybe even, uh, well, yeah, definitely close to three hours. So as expected, the charcoal was starting to die off. At this point, if I had a lot more to cook, I would have added, you see in the left corner there, there is more charcoal. This was two 20-pound bags or two 20-ish pound bags of charcoal, and it will last for four hours probably be able to cook on it for five hours you'd have to readjust and kind of shake some of the ash away but that Kingsford Kingsford blue bag does last for quite a while so here I'm getting the hot dogs turned you know making sure they are warmed up if you didn't know hot dogs are already fully cooked you can eat them cold but yeah, it is what it is at this point, I kind of stepped away from the grill for a moment to just take a break. And I think I was talking to, I met a young lady there who was from Philadelphia and we got to talking and I, I kind of was like, oh, you know, this is my aunt Linda and I uh, adopted her or I self adopted my, you know, self and uh, as my aunt and she lived not too far away. She was like, oh, you know, I always see things going on here and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, look, go get, go get something to eat. So this was the, there was a box of hamburgers from Sam's. This was the 80 count box. So I said, all right, well, let me go ahead and try to fit this whole box. But it was starting to melt and kind of refroze. So you saw I was trying to break them apart. But I got them all on the grill. This was a 40 count box. If I said 80 count, it was a 40 count box. And there again, you see the grill, the, the camera moving around that, that, that wind was no joke. So there you have it. You see how many hamburgers will fit on that grill. I mean, it'll probably fit 50 burgers if I stack them on top of each other, maybe even more. There was still plenty of space on the grill for me to put more burgers. At this point, I'm starting to wind down, and this is, I know this is the, the last bang, basically, on the grill. I'm just going to cook these burgers, and then it was about 5.15-ish, and I told you I had to do a half an hour setup and a half an hour breakdown. So at 5.30, I knew I was done cooking. Because of the fact that I was just basically traveling across town with the grill, I didn't worry about putting the fire out or anything like that. I just closed the grill, lashed it down, and drove home. So the charcoal, once I reorganized it after I was done uh, with the chicken debacle, I moved it forward to make it easier on myself. So that's why you see I'm cooking, as opposed to cooking like left to right, I'm cooking, you know, forward, front to back or back to front. The burgers that were in the front cooked faster and of course, you know, finished first. And then I moved the burgers that were in the back forward. And like I said, at this point, I'm just trying to get it done. I, don't, I know I'm pretty, pretty sure I was still there talking to Bumpy. I saw his shoe there a second ago. So he was still shooting the breeze with me for a while, and I'm like, all right, you know, I'm about to go get this get this taken care of. 
You see, I don't really stand still. I'm always talking to somebody or shooting the breeze, whatever. But I, I kind of wish I had a head of camera in, in the opposite direction so you could see who I was talking to. But get these burgers finished, and then I'll show you some clips I took when I was there. Alright, so this is where I was set up all day. Just been cooking and cooking and cooking. Hopefully you can hear me over the music and the wind. But we got this is a, an alumni association cookout. So there's vendors and just coming out. I'm I'm getting to the point where I am winding down. Man flying a drone. former mayor of Baltimore City, uh, Jack Johnson. He was an uh, interim mayor. So, taste test number two, and one of his friends came with me. They're over there playing at the playground. But, pretty nice chill spot. I couldn't be on the grass, so that's why I had to be over here. No cookout is complete without a line dance. No cookout is complete without a line dance. Oh yeah, definitely want to keep talking. Simon get copyright struck. Simon keep talking and just babbling. But taste testing number two. Hey. Well, bottom baby. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.